Shalom Aleichem. We will say a few words regarding the our upcoming parasha, Parashat Vayetze. I would like to dedicate this uh, talk to my granddaughter who uh, has gotten married uh, this week, Baruch Hashem. Yesterday night we had a beautiful Sheva Brachot with music and everything. It was Mamash Mishamayim. You could see here how a couple that come from a family of great people of Torah are joining together in, in such uh, Kedusha, such uh, purity purity of the heart, the purity of the mind, and this is uh, something that we, we, we should wish to every family in the land of Israel and outside the land of Israel. And the day will come, and is, it is coming, when the Jewish people will finally will be motivated towards Torah and good deeds, and that's the only way that we need, the only way that will rescue us from the hatred of the nations, from the, the persecution of the nations, and our direct enemies today, as in every generation. Parashat Vayetze. Vayetze Yaakov mi Be'er Shava. Vayelech Harana. Now, and it means that uh, Yaakov went out from Be'er Sheva, you know, the Be'er Sheva is a city in the land of Israel, and he went to Haran. Haran was outside the land of Israel. We have to understand here several things. Number one, the question that our sages ask, and it's brought in Rashi, I mean, why is it that he has to, to say Vayetze and Vayelech? And he went out and he went. Why isn't this enough to say Vayetze Yaakov Vayelech Vayetze Yaakov Lecharan and Yaakov went out to the city of Haran. Usually the Torah does not repeat itself in any way or say anything that is unnecessary. And therefore our sages said that here we have to ponder upon the words Vayetze and he went out from Be'er Sheva and Vayelech, Vayelech, he went out to Haran. We have to understand that Yaakov left the land of Israel, Be'er Sheva, the city of his parents, just uh, because he wanted to take a, a nice uh, little uh, sight uh, seeing and everything no that's not that he went Vayetze, it's because he was told by his mother get out and go to escape from the wrath of your brother Esav from whom you have taken number one you have taken the birthright the Bechora and then <laughs> the most painful things that happened to Esav his big brother was that Yaakov took away from him the blessing of Yitzchak, their, their father. We all know the story, I'm not going to repeat the story that we read in last week's parasha, of course. Of course, people ask, how is it possible that uh, Yaakov, our father Jacob, how is it that he agreed to this kind of, uh, of doing? I mean, it's, it's, it's a lie. He went out to his uh, father, his father is blind, and uh, he made believe that he is Esav, so that he can still take away from him the blessing of Yitzchak. And you have to understand, people might say, so what? What's the big deal in a blessing? I mean, he's, uh, uh, people are used to say, Misha Berach Avotenu, and that's it. No. The blessing of Yitzchak is a blessing that will go for all the generations, for all the people that, can, that will come out from the seed of, of Yaakov, or from Esav. Now, Rivka, who has been endowed with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, she was a real prophetess. So she knew what will be the future of the people, of, his, of the nation of God, if Esav will take the blessing of Yitzchak. And therefore, 
she committed uh, Yaakov, her son, her beloved son, to go and wear the vestments that usually be, would belong, the furs that would belong to Esav, and uh, he would come and uh, lie, practically lie to his father and say that he is Esav, rather than he is Yaakov. How is it possible that Yaakov agreed to such a thing? Well, the answer is very simple. Just for a moment, think. If Esav would have taken the blessing of his, of his father Yitzhak, or the birthright, the world would be different today. There is no nation of God, because we all know the intentions of Esav. Our sages were very clear about that, that Esav was a man, a womanizer, a man who, who pursued uh, violence, who killed at random, and uh, spilled blood everywhere. And he was a man of tremendous valor, I understand, he is the son of Yitzhak. But at the same time, he was a man who was completely, in his character, different than the character of Yaakov. And uh, they know that the nation of God must be the kind of nation that doesn't know violence, unless if it is, uh, if it is exerted upon them. When is it that the Jewish people defends itself? Only when it defends itself. Then there is violence, of course. I mean, all the attacks of the Jewish people were defensive. Maybe, except in the time of King David. Well, that's a different story. But throughout all the generations, we find that the Jewish people have been, have been submitted to, to, to all kinds of horrors that were uh, used upon them by all the nations, wherever they were. And uh, unfortunately, we know what happened in, in, the, in the last century with the Holocaust. The Jewish people were practically in the hands of anyone who wanted to massacre them. And if it was not for the protection of God, I mean, that does not prevent us from suffering, but we are still here to say, here we are alive. And today we are alive and making a lot of noise in the world. We are the nation of God. Even the nations admit that. And they say, the, the, the problem is that they refuse to say that it's us. They say, yes, the Jewish people is the nation of God that has been chosen by God. But you are not the nation of, uh, of God, you are not the Jewish people. I mean, Christianity says we are the real Jewish people. Well, unfortunately, what can we say? Let the future tell the, the truth about all this. But in the meantime, the Jewish people is not a nation of violence. I mean, even our, our, our glorious army today in the land of Israel is known as Tzahal, which is an acronym, an acronym for the word Tzva Hagana Le Israel, the defense forces of Israel. The only time we do violence is only because it's, it's, it's a defense. I mean, we have to protect ourselves, right? We never went to any nation to try to conquer them or anything. I mean, even when the Arab, they, they say that we have conquered the land of uh, their land. What are they talking about? There is no more valid document than, the, than, than the, the, the Bible itself which testifies that the land of Israel is the land of the Jewish people. Even the Quran of the Muslims say that. And if they say that, I mean, many of their own uh, lead, uh, religious leaders, they do say it. So what do you want from us? Besides, in 1948, the Arab nations attacked us when we were, we were so feeble we were so weak after the Holocaust. It's a horrible act that they would come to decimate the remnant of the Jewish people after the Holocaust. And God showed his miraculous hand. And with a few people, we were a small army with almost no weapons. We have defeated five Arab nations who came with tanks and every means possible to practically destroy us. And it repeated itse itself in 1956, it repeated itself in 1967, 
If you remember Nasser and, and all the manifestations and the, the declarations that we are going to practically destroy the people of Israel and take up the land of uh, Israel that belongs to Palestinians, so to speak. We defended ourselves, that's all. That's all we did. And the victory was ours. And then again, in, during Yom Kippur War in 1972, and more and more and more up to today. We are still defending ourselves. Yes, it looks like we are attacking and we have tremendous force and everything. Do we have any other choice? Imagine if we didn't have the means with which we can attack and win. All it takes for, from the Arabs is one single victory to finish with us. How can you blame us? So anyway, Rivka the mother of Esav and Yaakov. She was a real prophet. She knew what will be the future. If the, the blessing of Yitzchak, which is a blessing of a man of God, would go to Esav, there's no more nation of God. What would happen to the world? It has to belong to Yaakov. Besides, our sages said, Remember, we read in last week's parasha, banim bekirba. They were twins in the womb of their mother Rivka, Yaakov and Esav, and there was it was quite tumultuous, right, in in the womb of the mother. And our sages explain, Yaakov wanted to go out when they approached when when Rivka approached a place of uh, uh, worship of God, that is holy. Yaakov wanted to get out, and. Esav, when Rivka approached a place of Avodah Zarah, of idol worshipping, he wanted to go out. Of course, this is a, a, a description that our sages meant by it to, 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 to tell us what will be the future of Esav. What was his motivations? And it's true, by the way. And Esav, of course, he wanted the blessing of his father but it was taken by Yaakov, so therefore his hatred since then does not stop until today, right? So Rivka said to Yaakov, my son, go out, go, leave Be'er Sheba, leave the land of Israel, escape the wrath of your brother Esav who wants to kill you, because he's planning to kill you after the death of Yitzchak. Translation, Esav said, the days of, uh, of my father Yitzchak is, are numbered. He's about to die. He's very old. As soon as he dies, I shall do the best I can to kill my brother Yaakov. Well, Yaakov had no choice. Number one, he has to listen to his mother. That's called kibud avaim, the respect of one's mother. By the word of, of his mother, he had to go out. But at the same time, Esav was not, I mean, Yitzchak was not dead. He was still alive and very holy. He also agreed that Yaakov should leave. Even though he knew finally what happened, remember the Torah said after he heard what Esav, I mean, what, when Esav came back and he said, Please, Father, bless me also. Do you have only one blessing? And Yitzchak said, What can I do, my son? I already gave everything to Yaakov. And of course, he's talking spiritually. He gave him the world to come and he gave him spirituality. The only words of comfort that he said to Esav, Remember, Esav, I can give you the following. When Yaakov will lack in his uh, worship of God, which means when he will not do the right thing, then automatically you will be free to, to, do, to, 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 to subdue him. Otherwise, you are supposed to be his, his servant. What can I do? And what happened? Number one, we read, we read in, in, in the parasha, Vayechera Yitzchak harada gedola ad me'od. Yitzchak trembled when he heard that it was not Esav who came and 
took the bracha, took the, the blessing. It was a, it was Esav who, I mean, it was Yaakov who took it. This caused a tremendous, com a tremendous commotion to the heart of, of, of Yitzchak. And he said, Vayecherad Yitzchak harada gedola ad me'od. I mean, the Torah does not exaggerate. It means that this was almost an earthquake when he, he was, oh my God, what have I done? What, what, what happened here? But he added the words. Instead of becoming angry at Yaakov, Yitzchak added the words, Gam Let him be blessed. Now this is something that is not easy to explain. The Torah is quite confusing. On one hand, we should see that uh, yeah, that uh, Esav, that, that Yitzchak is completely angry and he would, should take away the bracha from Yaakov. No, he didn't do the following. In fact, in accordance with the teachings of our sages, Yitzchak was happy that this is what happened because he finally understood that this is the doing of God. Therefore, he blessed Yaakov. But he also said to Yaakov, leave not because of the fear of Esav. He said to him, because this way you have to get married. Go. Where? To Haran. That's where my family is. That's where you will get, your, you will find your wife. Now, we understand that those were two orders. The number one was from his mother to go out. That's why it says, Vayetze Yaakov. And Yaakov left out. To listen to the words of his mother. Vayele Harana. He went to Haran because he wanted to fulfill the words of his father. To go to Haran to find a wife. And lo and behold, we know, we are, as we are going, we are going to read in, in, in tomorrow's parasha, on Shabbat, parashat Vayetze, that Yaakov, indeed, first he found Rachel. And Rachel was extremely beautiful. She attracted Yaakov to the point of, and he wanted her, he fell in love with her. But then we know, Lavan, the father, the father of Rachel, he was a crook, a liar, and everything. And he said to him, to Yaakov, you want my daughter Rachel? Okay, you have to work seven years by me. Yaakov said, okay, it's worth it for me to, to work by you seven years so that I can become, I, I can take Rachel as my wife. But after seven years, at the night when he, when he thought he is with uh, Rachel, it was Leah. Of course, Rea, Leah did uh, this uh, because of other reasons. We don't have the time now to tell you all the reasons. But she became partners with, uh, with, with Leah. And, Le and Rachel did not divulge the secret of Leah. And in the morning when Yaakov woke up and he found out that he practically spent the night with Leah, her sister, not Rachel. When he came to Lavan, he says, Why did you, why did you lie to me? Lama rimitani? Well, uh, Lavan says, Listen, uh, in, in our place, we don't give you the, the younger one first. You have to take first the, the older one. And Leah was older than Rachel, therefore. Now, you want to, uh, Rachel? You have to work another seven years. Which... This is exactly what Yaakov did. He worked another seven years. And another seven years. <laughs> then his wives were two sisters. Yeah, uh, Leah and Rachel. And we know that Rachel was barren. Leah was able to give him, to give Yaakov many children, right? And then Rachel came to Yaakov and she said to him, Tomer Rachel el Yaakov hava libanim. She said to him, give me, I want children, otherwise I'm dead. Now you have to understand that our matriarchs did not want children just because they wanted to have children, like everybody. Of course, it's, a, it's quite sad when a woman does not give birth and doesn't have children. But that was not the case about our matriarchs. Rachel wanted also to be part of the plan to bring to the world the nation of God. If she doesn't have children, if she doesn't bring children with Yaakov, she cannot be part of that uh, plan. And that's why, and, and even Yaakov were, was startled. He said, what do you want from me? 
but Hashem heard finally the prayer of Rachel and he gave her Yosef and later on he gave her Binyamin. But in the meantime, Rachel, uh, Leah gave him 10 tribes. Altogether, we have 12 tribes. Ah, now we understand that Yaakov Abin, we understand finally why all this, all this happened because we need the 12 tribes of Israel which make up the, 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 the nation of Israel. Even though today we don't have all the 12 tribes, in the time of the, after the, the destruction of the first temple, I mean, and even before, uh, the 10 tribes disappeared because of uh, Sanherib, the king of Ashur, king of Assyria, and he scattered them all throughout the world. But we believe that the day will come when they, we will be reunited again. We didn't lose hope to find them. Today we have Yehuda, the, the, the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of Binyamin, and some of the tribe of Ephraim. But the other tribes, some of them were brought back by the prophet Yirmiyahu, and they are among us. The Talmud is talking about it, and he says he could recognize by the vocation of everyone, if he, which, cry, which tribe he comes. If, he, if, the, if it is a man who wants the sea, for example, and he wants to build his house near the sea, and uh, he, he travels in the sea, all his life is the sea, it means that he comes from the, tribes, from the tribe of Zvulun. It's only an example. But anyway, Yaakov was the one that God gave him the 12 tribes. Now, what is the difference between Abraham Yitzchak and Yaakov. Our sage said that Yaakov was Bechir Sheba'avot. He was the choicest of all the patriarchs. He was the best. How could anybody be the best, more, better than Abraham Avinu, our father Abraham? Or even Yitzchak, who is known as Ola Temima. He was, he was considered the purity, the perfection itself. And he never left the land of Israel because he was kept all the time with the special holiness that was given only to Yitzchak who sacrificed himself during the, the binding of uh, Isaac, you know, Akedat Yitzchak. So how can we say that Yaakov is more important than Abraham and Yitzchak? Well, the answer is very simple. Our sages said, Shemitato haitash lema. Translation, the bed of Yaakov was a bed of perfection. What does it mean? Now let's go back to Abraham. Our father Abraham, who is the, the paroxysm of uh, perfection, no question about it, but he gave us Yitzchak. Thank you very much, Abraham. I mean, better uh, than, than Yitzchak. There's no better than Yitzchak. But he also gave us Esav. The enemy of Israel. How come? How come from Abraham comes a seed? One part of that seed is very holy and pure, and the other part is impure. How is it possible? I'm sorry, uh, by the way, uh, Abraham gave birth to Ishmael, of course, not Esav. But Ishmael also is the enemy of Israel. Now, we understand that he had two children, Yitzchak and Ishmael. One is good, one is bad. So his bed was not perfect. And why is that? There is a possibility to say that the reason is because he was the son of Terach. The father of Abraham was an idol worshipper. Now, the fact that Abraham came out from that milieu is something that uh, says about, a lot about Abraham, that he was exceptional. But in the meantime, he was the son of Terach. There is a certain affectation here. When you have a father like this, there is always, uh, there is something that will come out from this. And that's why we have a Yishmael. It's not the fault of Abraham, of course. That's what wanted, that's what God wanted. He wanted the nation of uh, Ishmael. He wants the Muslims. He wants the Ishmaeli nation, who believed also in one God. But we have a Yitzchak. So, better than Yitzchak. How can anybody be better than Yitzchak? Who gave his life to be a sacrifice just for the sake of God. So Yitzchak 
Married Rivka. Perfection of, of all perfections. There's nothing better than Rivka. No one. And she was exceptional in her deeds. Her deeds of kindness. That's, that's a wonderful couple, right? We discussed that last week, right? But you have to understand that for, that also is going to have a certain a certain affectation. Now Yitzchak is the son of Abraham. What he will bring is only purity, no question about it. But Rivka, with the fact that she is the perfection itself, nevertheless she was the daughter of Betuel. Betuel was an idol worshipper. You have to pay for that also. That's why she brought to the world Yaakov, that's purity, and Esav, impurity. Two different forces. The opposite completely. By the way, God was interested that there should be a Esav, that there should be a nation of Christianity, the Edom. There's a reason. The Kuzari, Rabbi Uda Levi, in his book, the Kuzari discusses that. He says it's, it's very important that we have Christianity and we have uh, Islam. Because those were the two religions that at least attenuated the terrible effect of idol worshipping that used to be in a long time ago. Right? But still, Yaakov and Esav. So, you see what happens when the father is not so good? By the way, this should teach us a great lesson. Everyone should remedy to his midot to try to be the best he can. Otherwise, it's going to his character is going to infiltrate into the system of his children. If the father is a liar, so there's almost certainty that one of the children, at least, will also be a liar. That's why people have to be very careful to rectify their, 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 their character. This way their children will be very good children. Our sages said, Yaakov mitato haitash lema. His bed was perfection. He brought 12 tribes. Each one of them is a story of great holiness. Despite the fact that you might get the wrong idea from the stories of the Torah. But at the same time, they are the tribes of the, the, the Jewish people. They are holy. You know, at the end we are going to read uh, in a few weeks, in Parashat Vaichi, that Yaakov Avinu, before he died, he wanted to bless all his children. So he wanted to find out if the name of God is among them. And they said, what was their answer? All of them came out with a declaration, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We believe only in one God. To say that in those times was not easy. The world was permeated with idol worshipping, all kinds of gods. But not the the tribes of Israel, the children of Yaakov and Leah and Rachel. Mitato Shlema. His bed was perfect. So, we understand, and this is, by the way, a good, an, an important lesson that one should keep in his mind. That one should do the best he can to better his character his midot, his good deeds. When you do that, especially if when you apply efforts, you know, that's our job in this world. Our job is to make efforts. We're going to read in next week's parasha, Parashat Vaishlach, next Shabbat, that Yaakov was named Israel also by the angel. He said to him, your name will not be anymore uh, Yaakov only, it will be Israel. What does it mean? Of course it means, the practical explanation is that uh, Yaakov is that he held by Esav. Yaakov came out from the womb of his mother holding the uh, the, 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 the you know the, the, the bottom of his uh, the feet of, of Esav. Our sages explain, by the way, why is that? Why was he holding the foot of Esav? Because Yaakov was supposed to be the first one to come out. But Esav pushed him out. 
How did it happen? Don't ask me how it happened. But that's what our sages said. Why? Because Yaakov was tiparishona. He was the first drop of, of, of Yitzchak. So he was supposed to be the Bechor. Now you understand why he took away the, the birthright of Esav? You understand why he took away the blessing of Yitzchak? Because he was supposed to be the first one. And that's why he was holding the foot of Esav. So, we understand here that definitely Yaakov was meritorious enough to deserve the birthright. He was the Bechor. And also the blessing of Yitzchak. With the blessing of Yitzchak, the Jewish people goes until today. But there is always that which lurks at us all the time when we better our deeds, when we become a nation of God as we are supposed to be, there is no nation that can do anything against us. When we are united under the banner of God, there is no nation, despite the fact that we are so small, no nation can, can overcome us. But the reason why we suffer is because we are not perfect, unfortunately. But if one keeps in his mind, do the best you can to rectify your bad deeds. Everybody knows what are his bad deeds. There are people who, have, uh, who are easy to lie. Or there are people who, who are easy to, you know, to have a hot temper. Or they, are, they, are, they have gava, they have haughtiness and, and are conceited. All this must be rectified. All this must be remedied. Otherwise it will become the lot of the children also. It's the law of nature. Why? And the children will bring their children. And they also will have the effect of their own parents. That's what we learn from all this talk that we said today. And I, I think that with this lesson we should bless all the people of Israel, that we should all do Teshuvah, as the Rambam is writing in Hilchot Teshuvah, chapter 5, that the day is coming when every Jew is going to do Teshuvah. Well, Be'ezrat Hashem, we do see signs of that. Many, many people have, uh, have uh, changed their life and they became Torah-oriented. Now, of course, there are so many Jews who, are still ha who still have to think about this. But today we see the miracles of God, Ribbono Shel Olam. Did you see? This week we were attacked by Hamas, who sent more than 400 missiles against us. There was only one casualty, one dead in Ashkelon. And that one was from Hebron, a Palestinian. And there was one woman who was... Uh, wounded and uh, apparently they said he, it, was, it was his wife of course there were other uh, people who were hurt but most of them nothing special nothing terrible now imagine if we sent 400 missiles to any nation my god what would happen but the Hamas keep on sending missiles I mean, without any, they don't care if it will hit children or old people. They don't care. They have no notion of uh, Rahmanut, of, of, of compassion, of the laws that the world abide by them, by, the, by those laws that you have to be careful whom you attack. I mean, watch, if the, Jew, if, if the, the Jewish army, Tzahal, if they wanted to destroy Aza, you think it would be difficult? It wouldn't take much time before they can decimate everyone there. But we don't want that. We don't want to hurt civilians. We don't want to hurt innocent people. Even though their innocence is something to be questioned. But at the same time, all that our, our forces are attacking only those places from which the missiles come. But we, have, we should never forget that God practically is showing His face more and more. Now, as our sages said, that towards the coming of the Mashiach, the Haster Panim, I mean, God for 2,000 years has, has been hiding His face. 
but little by little now he is uncovering his face. Little by little we see it. Of course we are still very stubborn. Many of us are stubborn from recognizing the miracles of God that he does with us. And he will keep doing it. And more and more, more and more evidence of, of great miracles, of unnatural miracles. But we have to wake up. But we will. And let's hope that we will wake up, not after we are hurt terribly. We have been hurt enough throughout the generations. The Jewish people have suffered enough. And our stubbornness comes as a blessing to us also, while it could be a curse, because uh, uh, our stubbornness causes us to even look at those miracles and yet not to change. But at the same time, we are stubborn by the fact that we are still here today as Jews. There is no nation that would have suffered that much who would remain what they were originally. But we are still the original Jewish people. How is it possible after we have suffered so much? The little expected from us is to be disappointed and to say what kind of religion we have. Is this the God that is supposed to protect us? Well, you see that we are still here. And even the non-religious Jews, they prefer to stay Jewish. Try to uh, buy any, try to tell a Jew to change his religion. I mean, not many will do that. No matter what, even though they don't keep the mitzvot, they are not really Shomer Torah and mitzvot, and yet they will not give up their Judaism. And this is something that, Bezrat Hashem, God willing, we shall talk about this subject more and more. In the meantime, let me wish everyone Shabbat Shalom. Umvorach. At the same time, Mazal Tov to Elchanan, Levi, and Rivka, my granddaughter, and may Hashem give them success, and they should bring to the world good children like the children of Yaakov Avinu. Amen.